Hi, I'm Beth Graves, and thank you for joining us on the Circus Arts Spotlight. Each week, we'll shine the spotlight on the people, programs, and events of the Circus Arts Conservatory. In addition to professional and student youth performances, we'll explore incredible outreach programs and learn how the circus arts impact so many aspects of life. For more information on today's topic, or anything circus arts related, please go to our website, circusarts.org. Now, let's get started. Our guest today is Marsha Carlson Pack. Marsha loves all things Circus Arts Conservatory and has been volunteering with us for many years, even recruiting her daughters to work with us too. Every February when the big tap goes up, Marsha takes over, running the volunteer ushers as a well-oiled machine. The performers depend on her local knowledge and our guest ringmasters depend on her for guidance. We're so pleased to have you here today, Marcia. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So can you tell us about your background and then how you got involved with the Circus Arts Conservatory? Because from what I understand, you do not have a circus family background. That's correct. I do not have a circus <laughs> family background. I have acquired one through Circus Arts Conservatory. And uh, well, my background, I'm a mom with five kids. And I've done a little bit of everything, customer service, retail, et cetera. My husband and I had a business. And throughout raising the five kids, I was lucky enough for most of those years to be a stay-at-home mom. So I was team parent. I initiated a team parent program at my kids' high school. So I've done a little bit of that public relations and so forth. So I just kind of came into circus arts when my girls started volunteering and one thing led to another and here I am today. <laughs> so how did your girls start volunteering? Okay, the girls um, began volunteering. There was a woman who worked for the Circus Arts Conservatory, actually before it was Circus Arts Conservatory, and her daughter and my daughter were in the same class at Out of Door Academy and her name was Bessie Mitchell. So she worked for the organization and um, they, the kids at uh, Out of Door Academy need community service hours. So Betsy was the first person to actually come up with the idea and ask some of the high school students if they wanted to work with community service hours. And they did things like handed out brochures downtown at different festivals. Mm -hmm. They, it was the first time they, I think this was back in 2007, 2008, Right. where they, Betsy brought some of the high school students in to work as ushers okay. um, in the Big Top, which was then located on 12th Street. How I personally got involved, my elder daughter, Annika, was in high school at the time and needed those community service hours, so she was going to do it. My younger daughter, Audra, was 11 at the time and in seventh grade, and she wanted to do it and needed community service hours. So I, you had to fill out the application and meet with the then volunteer coordinator. So I did that and had an interview and she said, Audra, the younger one was a little young, but if I would agree to stay on campus, she would give her a go. Oh. So me being me, I wasn't gonna sit in the car and read a book or anything. <laughs> so I said, well, okay, I'll, I'll volunteer too. What do I have to do? Right, and that changed your life. And that was it, it <laughs> changed my life. Yes, exactly. So exactly. That's a that's a really really good story. <laughs> I've heard that story before. So um, February is the is the big big month, but yes. there's a lot of getting ready of things before February. Exactly. So and you're also now somewhat involved with Sailor Circus, which is our youth circus program. Correct. So can you tell me in gearing up for what's coming, what are you doing right now? Okay. Well, for Circus Sarasota, we're just in the preliminary stages. I mean, operations, we have our lineup and like that. But as pertains to my role, we've just had kind of preliminary meetings, planning meetings, that kind of thing. Um, because I run the volunteers, I manage the volunteers once they come out, and I'm also in house management. So my role really kicks in once they raise the big top. Um, once that's up, I have a little pod which is my office and the right. house manager's office. So I have to outfit my pod, bring all my materials out there and so forth. And at that point, I will start attending rehearsals. So by attending rehearsals and seeing which artists are doing what, I can determine what the needs are for the show from a safety perspective. If the artists need anything specific during their act, for example, last year we had wire walkers, 
And one of my claims to fame was <laughs> I was the one who had to move their shoes <laughs> to backstage because they would come out in their clogs and go up the incline wires to perform, and the shoes would be left in the house. Ah. So I would have to, at a certain very strategic point, <laughs> go grab these shoes and bring them backstage so when they came through the curtain, they had their clogs because a uh, wire walker never wears their wire shoes anywhere else. Oh, okay. So I determine what each act needs. I generally talk to them if there's a concern, for example, horses. When we have a liberty act where we have nine or ten horses, unbridled, untethered, loose in the ring, what does that artist need me to do? And I assess from a house perspective, what do I need to do to keep the artist safe, the equine artist safe, and my patrons my public right. safe as best I can. Oh. So, and then I'll determine what's necessary there. Okay. And go with that. So what do you look forward to most about the show in February? Well, challenge. <laughs> I love it. Um, I thrive on challenge. I thrive on uh, situations where it's very intense. Um, where I have to make decisions quickly and move very rapidly. I love that kind of thing. It's never the same. I see 37 shows in a row, and people always ask me, are you bored with that? Absolutely not, because each show, although the same is different and different things happen, you get to know the show. Um, the other thing I look forward to the most is falling in love, because Every year, <laughs> I fall completely hopelessly in love with all of my artists, yeah. and I always come away thinking this was the best show ever. Right. So I guess those are the two big things. I really work well under pressure, and um, I get to know these artists. I know them personally. I know them professionally. I know quirkiness sometimes. Um, and it's just so much fun because you meet people from all over the world. Some of them don't speak English very well. Right. So I love that because we can communicate. You know, circus is a universal language all its own. Right. If you can't communicate in a language, if they only speak Russian or Ukrainian or something, you can do hand signals. You can do, you know, you point and shoot a lot out there. Right. And it's really a lot of fun for me to work with those artists. Mm -hmm. where I have to work a little harder or some of them where I have to work a little harder to gain their respect or their trust or their um, willingness or, or whatever, you know, to, and they bring me into their world. Yeah. And I have actually come away every single show. I can't think of a show I haven't worked where I have not been invited by at least one artist, usually several, to come visit them wherever they are in the world. <laughs> so I haven't taken anybody up on that yet, but I'm, I'm saving it up for my <laughs> retirement. <laughs> That's just great. So also part of your job is um, you get to lead the guest ringmasters. You get to explain to them what they're going to be doing. You get to drag them. So what is that experience like? Okay, the hosting the guest ringmasters is one of the highlights of my career. Because I feel in many senses, there was a team that put that program together, right. but I was kind of on the ground floor of that, initiating that particular program. So I nurture that like it's my own baby. So I'm just realizing now, most people listening do not know, know what, what a guest, guest ringmaster ring is. is. So well, I was just, just going that. to define a guest ringmaster. Everyone knows we have an official ringmaster. Right. A guest ringmaster is someone who is invited um, for whatever reason, perhaps, maybe we've had senators, we've had representatives, we've had uh, pillars of our community, whether they were businessmen or they were educators or whatever, from all walks of life. And they are invited to attend. It's a very VIP experience to actually open the show with Dolly and Pedro. Now, these are truly VIP right. people. And I pride myself in treating them with every VIP, uh, I mean, trick I can pull out of my hat. Right. I, I'm, I guess, a traditionalist, so I really enjoy the pomp and circumstance and the formality of our guest ringmaster program. A guest ringmaster is generally greeted. I have a radio, so someone will call me on the radio 
and announce my guest ringmaster is out front in the foyer tent. I will go out there, greet them, and they usually have a family with them, um, and then escort them very VIP-ish, you know, <laughs> with their arm in my arm and everything, into the front tent, and I generally seat their family. I come and get them when the time is right, and then I will escort them again with tradition and the formality that a ringmaster should have uh, to backstage. And all along the way, I bombard them with trivia facts oh, okay. about circus, about our tent, how big is the ring, what's the diameter of the ring and why, how, how high is our cupola, things like that, how many seats do we have. And they really seem to enjoy that little trivia. I bring them backstage where I've hand-selected several ringmaster coats and hats for them, and I wardrobe them. So they get to choose which one kind of best fits their personality. Right. I kind of research, you know, the size of the person first. So I have like maybe four coats for them to choose from and hats to, to right. match. So when they pick that out, we get them all outfitted in their wardrobe. They look very stylish. And I will generally introduce them to our ringmaster, who is Joseph Dominic Bauer, the best in the business. Who is also one of our guests this month. And oh, wonderful. Yes. I can't wait to hear that podcast. So I will introduce them. I'll give them a little lay of the land behind the curtain and backstage. Um, I also protect them because generally the opening act is horses. So if we have 10 horses back there, yeah, if. You know, I just <laughs> keep myself between them and the horses. Then uh, Pedro will come in. I will introduce them if they don't know Pedro. And then Dolly comes in. Dolly, Dolly will present each guest ringmaster with a gold or silver whistle. And Dolly prides herself, and it's one of my favorite things. She actually hand braids each lanyard on every whistle just for that particular ringmaster. Which is a great gift. It's a great gift. And it is theirs to keep because traditional circus opens with the blowing of the whistle. Right. If the whistle doesn't blow, circus doesn't begin. <laughs> so, and then I just give them instructions on how we're going to proceed and so forth and when they're going to enter the ring. And then I hand it over to our ringmaster, Joe Bauer, and he takes over from there and I they go in the ring, they say what they want to say after being introduced by Dolly and Pedro. When they're finished, they exit the ring, and I very formally <laughs> escort them back to their seats where they may enjoy the rest of the performance. So it's a really wonderful it's, experience, and it's unique. Yes, it's very unique. It's uh, All my guest ringmasters are fantastic. I mean, honestly, they do a great job. And the ones who are the most nervous generally do the best delivery, so it kind of works out that way. But uh, it's a great program. It's a great way to honor. I've had everything from double amputee veterans, uh, where that was challenging. We had to figure out how we were going to execute that, right. um, to, like I said, uh, state senators, House of Representatives, radio congressmen, personalities. radio personalities. <laughs> and they all come in with different personalities and different ways they want to proceed. Some are very laid back and casual, and others are more formal in their delivery and really enjoy that pomp and circumstance. Yeah. So it's a lot of fun. That's great. That's yeah. really great. So earlier you talked about how your daughters got you involved mm -hmm. in the Circus Arts Conservatory, and then I know later you got them back involved as I did. How, <laughs> and how did that happen? How did that happen? Um, By a lot of begging and <laughs> coercing and promising. How does anything happen when you're a parent? Well, actually what happened, um, I'll go back. So yes, they volunteered until they graduated high school for many years, went off to college, and there were four years between the two girls there, uh, three actual academic years. So my elder daughter, Annika, graduated college, she moved back home and was looking for a job. And she was actually teaching, substitute teaching at Out of Door Academy oh. where she had attended. So in 2015, she was back home and we had another house manager and Annika was the assistant house because at that time, this fellow's name was Skip Land. He had been with us 10 years. Um, Skip was going to retire. Okay. So he was just aging out and decided that was his last year. So he brought Annika on board and trained her 
Oh. And 